Hi, this is Debbie, and today I'm exploring using white gouache with traditional watercolours to create opaque mixes I can paint over a coloured background. My card was inspired by the gorgeous Rifle Paper Company flower patterns they use on their many products. I was particularly drawn to a pattern with pink, peach and white florals with deep teal leaves over a muted aqua background and thought I'd have a go at recreating the style with a recent released Moments of Grey stamp set from Sensi Stamp. This set has the most beautiful script sentiments along with a few delicately drawn flowers and leaves. To start my card I needed to create the muted aqua background to paint the flowers on top of. As I will be painting on this background later, I decided to use Archer's Hot Press Watercolour Card. This has a smooth texture and so will make stamping the images later on a little easier. I could have painted a traditional watercolour background, but I wanted to create a smooth solid colour without much texture. I could have mixed a gouache and used that, but as this is a large area for the background, I decided that the easiest method was to blend ink over the surface. I started with Cloudy Sky Ink from Sinus' Stamp and a Picket Fence Blending Brush and despite the smooth surface of the hot press card, the fibres within the card still left a pretty mottled background, not the smooth one I was looking for. So I tried rubbing the ink pad directly to the panel, which was much better, but still not quite where I wanted it to be. So I picked up a water mister and spritzed the background with lots of water and this did the job. The ink blended with the fibres of the card to leave a smooth, solidly coloured background. I dried the panel thoroughly with a heat tool and then placed it in the Mini Misty. I reached for the Moments of Grey stamp set and chose the Thinking of You sentiment which I lined up on the background using a T-square ruler to ensure I had it on straight. I then treated the card with an anti-static powder bag which, as I'm going to emboss the sentiment, will help prevent embossing powder from randomly sticking everywhere. I then stamped the greeting in clear embossing ink and I did this a few times until I got a good impression. I then sprinkled with white embossing powder and tidied away any specks of stray embossing powder with a dry paintbrush before heat setting. Despite the powder bag and sweeping around the sentiment with a paintbrush, I still found I had a few random spots of embossing. However, these were easy to fix by scraping away the excess with a scalpel and then rubbing over the area with an eraser to smooth the surface again. Moving on and with a greeting in place, I stamped the flowers and leaves. I decided on a design where the florals were all hanging down from the top of the card and so I stamped the various images from the Moments of Grey set in clear embossing ink. I actually like how the turn and tone flowers look and I also thought these flowers and leaves would look lovely white heat embossed too and left as a monochrome card. However, I still had plans to paint over the guidelines left by the clear embossing ink. To give variation and fill in a few places, I also used a couple of images from the So Love set from Simsa Stamp. I kept nestling one image next to the other until I had a border of florals stamped along the top third of the card. And so with the floral border now planned out with the clear embossing ink, it was time to turn to the paint. Gouache is an opaque watercolour and so you can paint light colours over dark and vice versa. You can buy gouache already coloured but a great way to stretch your supplies is to use a tube of white gouache and mix it with any traditional watercolours you have to hand. The white gouache in the mix means that the resulting paint will be opaque. To start I mixed a peachy pink colour with the white gouache from Windsor & Newton and then a little Daniel Smith Cronacridone Coral and Hansa Yellow Light added. I kept mixing the three paints until I had the colour I was after. I then took a small paintbrush and started to paint over the flowers. Painting with gouache results in the flat matte area and has quite an illustrative feel to the style. As I painted, I made sure to fully cover the tone on tone inked guidelines. Being opaque, the paint easily covers over the lines, but I needed to make sure I went right to the edges of each image to cover over the lines and ensure that my edges were clean and crisp without a darker halo around them from the stamped lines. The aim of painting with gouache is to lay down a block of colour which when dry you can come back into and add details. As I continued to paint I used white gouache mixed with perylene green to create a dark teal. I used a little of this mixture also to mute down a green I mixed with green gold and white gouache. I also brought in some muted yellow tones later on by mixing cronacridone gold with white gouache and in places I even just use white gouache on its own. You will notice that as it dries the gouache darkens in colour which is surprising because when you paint with traditional watercolours you usually find that the paint lightens as it dries. 
Perhaps it's the blue base which is darkening the colours they, as they dry in this example. I think this is particularly noticeable on the pink flowers and so I did go back in and paint over these again with a lighter shade. And that is for sure a joy of painting with gouache in that you have that flexibility to paint one colour over another and correct any mistakes and it doesn't matter which colour you are painting over which because you can paint white over a dark colour or equally a dark colour over a pastel. With the first layer down I went back in and added more details such as veining for the leaves and extra sweets of colour to the petals. And for these I mixed either lighter or darker colours that I'd already been using. I did add a little sepia for the stems to some of the leaf sprigs and some lunar black for the centres of the flowers. I added a couple of hand painted flowers and berries as well as dots of white gouache in places to fill in any gaps. I was struggling with the white sprigs I'd added. They seemed a bit stark and the shape wasn't doing it for me so I adapted them to be more like flowers and painted the stems green and added yellow stamens peeking out too. So here I'm finishing off with the white dots to fill in any gaps and also while I had the white on my brush I dotted around a few highlights on the flowers and leaves too. Although my gouache painting is far from perfect, I still really like the overall look. I know that with practice I will improve. I like adding a different style to my repertoire and it is also great to stretch the supplies I have already. I love to use my traditional paints for watercolouring and I highly recommend a tube of white gouache for opaque white details and pink splatter etc. Never mind adding it in for this technique. I trimmed the panel to be slightly smaller than the A2 card base and add a foam adhesive to the back and then adhered to a white card. To embellish I added a few Girls Best Friends sequins from Sam's Stamp and Pastel Paradise sequins from Little Things from Lucy's Cards and kept them in place with Gina K Connect glue. I then decided to cover the white painted dots with Simply White Nouveau Crystal Drops instead to add more texture and dimension. And that completes this card using white gouache with watercolours to paint over a muted aqua background and set off the lovely script White Heat Embossed Sentiment from Moments of Grace stamp set. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today, as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at LimeDudaDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to get notified when a new video is up, don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.